What's up everybody and welcome to this video. I'm going to be giving you my impressions of the Mamiya RB67 Pro S. Um, as you may or may not know, I've had this camera since the end of September. So I've had a few months to take it out on shoots and get a feel for it and to find out whether or not this camera has potential to make it onto my roster. Now, I did not buy this camera. My friend Scott let me hold his camera for a couple of months to give me an idea of how the camera handled and how I liked it. I've been thinking about getting a medium format camera for a while now. I figured I'd get it next year. So I wanted to get my hands on a couple of the cameras that have kind of caught my attention for the past couple of months. All right, so this camera is a juggernaut. Like it is, it's solid, you know. Like when you hold a newborn baby and you can't think of nothing else to say, just like, dang, it's heavy. And this camera is definitely heavy. You definitely know you have a you have a well-crafted instrument in your hand when you go out to shoot. Um, this thing is a beast. For real. God, I feel like I'm doing a workout. Put the heavy things down. I don't want this video to be too long, so I'm just going to jump right in with my positives. This camera feels really good in the hand. Every time I pick this camera up, I feel like I'm ready to go, I'm ready to shoot, let's do this. Um, so it definitely has that working towards it. Not every camera I pick up makes me feel like I want to shoot it, like I have to shoot it. When I have this camera near me, when I pick this camera up, I feel like I have to shoot it. And whenever I'm um, taking photos, lining up, you know, I feel weighted down, possibly because it's so heavy. But still, I feel very grounded when I'm using this camera. Whenever I have this camera in my hand, I feel steady. I don't feel like I'm going to drop it. So that's also pretty cool given how the orientation of shooting this camera is very different from shooting my SLR cameras, which are up here. Um, right now I have the eye level viewfinder on it. I really like the eye level viewfinder, like a lot. Get up on it. This thing is mad heavy though. It has to add at least eight pounds to the whole system using it. I really like this eye level viewfinder because it allows me to take the kind of portraits that I like to take. I like being able to take my uh, pictures from up here, mostly because I'm pretty short, I'm 5'3", and damn near everyone I shoot is taller than me. And no matter how far I get on my tiptoes, I can only get so far. So for me, having the eye level viewfinder was really helpful towards the end of using this camera. The waist level viewfinder, which I have in here, there she be, beauty makeup, what? Oh. Ah, now the waist level viewfinder here, it's also pretty cool. You know, I, I enjoyed this thing a lot. I particularly like that it has a, um, a magnifying glass here. This thing makes sure that you don't miss your focus. Let me tell you, if you want to nail focus, drop it because this magnifying glass will help you hit your focus every single time. I highly recommend it. Just do it. Don't question it. The, the camera also has like a lot of dummy proof locks on it. You have this lock right here for your bellows that can lock it down. So like when you're changing your film, you want to make sure you retract it all the way, lock it down so that you're not going to collapse your camera onto your bellows and potentially damage them by uh, crushing them. This little slide thing back here, make sure you're not exposing your film um, while you are switching things around or taking the back off. I guess I could touch on image quality, although at this point I feel like it's a no-brainer. If you move to medium format cameras, you're going to get more information on your exposures, more detail, more sharpness. And that's why I started to look towards getting a medium format camera just to get more detailed shots when I do portrait work. So I was not disappointed with any of the photos that I got while shooting the Mumia RB67 as the camera did what it did. This 90 millimeter is perfect for me. Yeah, I shot my friend Alice towards the end of having this camera and by that time I was much better with using it. I was faster at taking your photos, faster at my composition, faster at loading and unloading the film and I don't think I had any light leaks. But let's find out. I'll, put, I'll throw some photos up from that shoot. All right, let's jump into like a couple of the negatives. Like these things aren't like life altering. You shouldn't buy this camera because I don't, I didn't like these things. But they're just things that kind of stuck out in my mind that 
didn't really flow with with me that didn't really mess around with me and my style of shooting or gave me a hard time when I first got going. Um, the Waste Level Viewfinder did give me a hard time. It's very counterintuitive. It took me forever to line up shots to get my composition. Um, I looked through the viewfinder and to me, it looked like I should uh, rotate right, but I had to go the opposite way because everything's kind of reversed inside there. So that definitely took me a while and it really frustrated me. Um, in the beginning, it frustrated me. I may have said this a couple times, but this camera is heavy. It's mad heavy. Like really, really heavy. I ride a motorcycle. I carry all my gear on my back. The way the camera is kind of structured like a brick, it's kind of what it feels like when it's on your back. And I try to put some cushions around it, make the ride a little bit easier or smoother, but nah, it's just uncomfortable. It's heavy, it's a brick in the back. I walked around with it for a little bit on some shoots. After a while, you get a little tired, your arms start burning. You know, it's a workout. Carrying this camera is like a full body workout. If I wanted to, I could drop down and hit some squats with it and really feel like I have some weight training happening. If you're someone who doesn't like to carry heavy cameras, that may be a deterrent for you. The eye level viewfinder does make shooting this camera easier. You don't have to deal with everything being opposite of what you want to do. However, this eye level viewfinder makes this camera even, what? Heavier, much, much, heavier like damn you're bringing it up here but now you get your shoulder engagement happening you're getting your shoulder work done yeah camera's heavy another kind of thing that threw me off in the beginning that i didn't love was there are a lot of steps when taking a photo like i said you have to you have to take out this thing here from the back to make sure that when you uh, shoot the shutter, the light's gonna hit the film. You have to do that. You have to wind it here. Repetition is key when using this camera. The more you use it, the better you'll get with it until you won't even be thinking about it at some point. It'll just be muscle memory. And that's what you want with all your cameras, honestly, It's just to know your, know your gear and be able to just use it like it's a part of you. It's an extension of you. If you don't crank this, you're not advancing the film. Just retox your shutter. I made quite a few double exposures because I forgot to advance my film. And I'm not too unhappy with those double exposures that I created, but that was not my intention. Had I intended to make those double exposures, I feel like I could have done a better job. So maybe the next time I have this camera, I will do some double exposures with it just to show you guys what this camera is capable of. So yeah, lots of steps to shoot this camera. Another accessory Scott gave me for this camera setup is a like a little hand holder. I'm sure hand holder is not the actual right term, but it's this. He gave me this to put on to the camera as well. I tried it out once. It didn't feel good to me at all. Um, I'm already using both hands to work this camera anyways. And my method was I would uh, kind of grip the camera underneath with my left hand and then focus with my right hand and this threw me off I would have had to been holding basically the camera in this hand because it goes underneath so that you can bring it here if you need to and then there's like a little trigger back here a little shutter release button right here that allows you to take the photo and I tried it. it's just the camera's already so heavy. I don't have the most shoulder strength as I've sprained both of my shoulders in the past. So me coming up here, having all that weight right here, it was just kind of painful. And I couldn't see myself doing that for an entire shoot. So I hope my kind of quick rundown of pros and cons that I encountered while using this camera helped you out, gave you a realistic idea of what you can expect if you decide to give this camera a try. Will the Mamiya RB67 Pro S be my first medium format camera? I will say this, the Mamiya RB67 is a great gateway camera into medium format film photography. The price point is typically around $300 to $350 and if and when you outgrow it, you can sell it off for the same price if you don't damage it. All right, y'all, that's it for this video. Please go ahead and hit that like button for me. It helps me out a lot here on YouTube. Share the video with a friend if they too are looking to get into medium format film photography. As you know, sharing is caring. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet because you know I'll be back next week with another one. All right, y'all, peace.